So essentially planning America. Yeah. Some, somehow she figures out that's exactly how much it'll produce. Failure. Uh, Central planning always results in failure. Free Talk Live. Vincent, you wanted to share with us a story about this Elizabeth Warren. She is a uh, thug from Massachusetts, one of these politicians in D.C., like these Republicans and Democrats. She's a senator. She's a Democrat, right? Yes. Okay. (laughs) Without a doubt, yes. All right. (laughs) So this is from Popular Science. And uh, it's this uh, is the woman who claimed to be an Indian, right? Yeah, no, she claimed uh, she was of Native American descent, and then which and she got into college and got all sorts of special benefits by pretending to be a minority. Hmm. And then it turns out she did a DNA test, and it turns out she's she's like even whiter than I am, if that's possible. Huh. Right? Although this lighting doesn't doesn't help my case, but <laughs> yeah. So uh, and this is what I was surprised about that because the title here of the article is Elizabeth Warren wants public lands to create jobs and clean energy, and as you know people may or may not know the federal government owns like a lot of land like 90 percent of the state of nevada right and so you know for someone like elizabeth warren who claims to have so much care for you know the native americans one would wonder why she wouldn't if she were elected president right she's running as a democrat want to just give the land back to the natives right instead of using it for uh, her own purposes here so, so uh, these 65 sorry these 650 million acres matter so it begins here At a stage in the 2020 presidential campaign when most candidates are posting platitudes on Twitter, progressive hopeful Elizabeth Warren has opted for a different approach, taking to the public online platform Medium. The Massachusetts Uh senator released a procession of detailed policy proposals. Warren's latest manifesto, shared on Monday, focuses on... Where is this from, the story? Popular Science. Okay, thank you. Popsci.com. Warren's uh, manifesto shared on Monday focused on public lands and it, along with public lands in general, shouldn't be overlooked. America, and so this is a, this is obviously a pro Warren article, but uh, Americans may not realize that they collectively own about 650 million acres of public land and water in this country. Holy crap, fo- we own that? Oh, it's, it, I I didn't know it either. I mean, cool. This, can I go set up my? In, uh, can I charge rent? Yeah, can I start? <laughs> can, can I smoke there? Could I? Yeah. Um, in the form of national parks, wildlife refuges, Before monuments. You go on, we're joking because for listeners that maybe maybe don't understand that. Uh, we're we're joking about the idea that we own any of that. It's a fantasy that you are the government. You're not the government. You're not the the state. The state owns that. They control it. And if you try to live on it, or you try to you know do something to it, build something there, or whatever. They're, the state's going to send men with guns to stop you. Well, the uh, Bureau of Land Management, in, uh, to be to be precise, and for they the have federal own, lands. Yeah. yeah, yeah, they have their own SWAT team. That's like that's you know that was the issue with a Bundy Ranch. It was there in in conflict with the BLM. Right. So it uh, the U.S. government purchased over 1.8 billion acres of land throughout the 19th century, but over two thirds of those original lands were allotted to individuals, corporations, and states through legislation like the 1862 Homestead Act, which encouraged Western settlement. Four agencies manage most of what's left. But yet most of the Western half of the United States is owned by the federal government. Oh, because, yeah, they bought it up after the fact. Yeah, most of Arizona. It's like more than 90%, right? Yeah, oh, yeah. yeah. Isn't that true of most Western states that it's like it's, 90%? Yeah, it's, it's – well, I think, I think Arizona is like even – even worse. So if it's ninety really? percent in other states, it's like ninety eight. Maybe it's seventy Arizona. and the rest. I don't yeah, know. But it's, it's a it's, lot. It's, it's the majority. Insane. Super majority. Yeah. Uh, for a managed what's up? About twenty six percent of the total land in the United States, and the rest is held in trust for federally recognized Native American tribes. Quote, and then they they have in brackets. It was their land first, after all. Uh, while past presidential candidates have tended to run on a succinct keep quote keep public lands public stance warren's 1600 word proposal brings some complexity to the issue here are the five things she wants to accomplish okay number one turn public lands into climate change slayers on her turn public land into climate change slayers how does land what so well that that's uh is a curious choice of a uh, vocabulary there but so it says on her first day in office Warren says she would sign a moratorium on new leases for fossil fuel drilling on public lands mm-hmm. citing that energy production in these areas is responsible for around 25% of a country's total greenhouse gas emissions. She'd also bring back methane pollution standards, which set a frequency for monitoring methane emissions from gas and oil wells and qualifications for engineers doing that monitoring. And the clean water rule, 
which expands the scope of waterways protected under the Clean Water Act, both of which were rolled back under President Trump's administration. But it's, quote, it's not enough to end our public land's contribution to climate change, the proposal says. It enlists them to fight against it. Warren has plans to provide incentives for renewable energy production on public lands with the hopes that it'll oh, be responsible. Okay. So she wants to, I see. So she wants to give take away the leases from the people who are currently leasing the public land and give them to other companies to lease that public land. Ah, that explains a lot. Gotcha. For, in order to, now, to be to, to be hold on, but to be clear, uh, at least according to the book uh, Healing Our World by Dr. Mary Ruart, one of, at least if I'm recalling correctly, it was her book. Anyway, I'll give her credit for it. <laughs> the uh, a lot of these public lands that are being mined or being somehow tapped for these resources are doing it in a very unsustainable way because the company doesn't own the land. The company can just come in there and clear cut the forest or they can, you know, come in there strip and mine the strip whole place. mine it. You know, so that that's because they don't own the land. They don't have any uh, benefit from selling the land down the line. They're never going to sell it because it's the government's land. So why not just decimate its uh, its resources? Um, so, I mean, to some extent, I can understand the first part of her proposal. I can understand where, where she's coming from with that. Uh, but, of course, the best solution for public land is to stop having public land and make it all privately owned because then private landowners would have an incentive to take care of the land because they might want to sell it someday and you don't want to sell somebody some strip dry barren husk or whatever that you'd still end up having to pay like property tax and, and anyways and it becomes a liability so they they would so like you're saying they would have an incentive to make sure it was the way they abuse the excuse me, used the land well, was right, uh, like a forestry company plants more trees you know they have a t they have a time period on which well there's a plot where the trees are this this you know tall and then you know there's n the new trees that they've planted and uh, if you're if you're leasing the land, you don't have the same incentives. That's all. Sorry. Go oh, ahead so, with the. Uh, and so she she's hoping that the land, the incentives for renewable energy production on public lands, with a hope that it'll be responsible for ten percent of America's overall energy production. So essentially, planning America. Some, yeah. Somehow she figures out that's exactly how much it'll produce. Failure. Uh, Central planning always results in failure. Quote, what it does do is send a signal, and it points us in the right direction, a direction that acknowledges that our new investment should not be in dirty fuels of a past, says Sharon Bushino, a senior advisor to the National Resources Defense Council Action Fund. Propos and this is another thing that, that politicians frequently do, is they believe they know the right direction. She knows the right direction that the market should go in, and they will do whatever they can to incentivize uh, to subsidize, in many cases, the direction they want to see these things go in. And that's unfortunate because while many people may look at that and say, well, yeah, we need more money spent on solar power. We need more money spent on wind generation and these alternative methods of generating power. There's nothing wrong with those genera you know, power generating methods. But the problem comes in when you uh, shift whatever the normal market circumstances would be. So normally... People, I think, are interested in these things. They want to see these things developed. I think there would be enough demand in the market to see them developed without the government trying to allocate resources in that direction unnaturally. And allocating resources in that direction unnaturally also means there might be some other concepts out there that get ignored completely. Like, what if somebody could figure out a way to turn water into, you know, the equivalent of gasoline? I mean, I'm not saying it's possible. Well, we but... don't know because they confiscate patents all the time. So, the toll-free number here is 855-450-FREE. And because they're funding the competition to those alternative ideas, because they've determined that it's going to be solar and it's going to be this other losers. thing. Yeah, it's Free Talk Live. More coming up. Vincent, you were sharing with us uh, some cockamamie plan from Elizabeth Warren about how she wants to turn the government land into some sort of fighters. Uh, she wants to make the land fight climate for environmental... Climate change slayers. Climate change slayers. Yeah, so she wants to put solar panels and wind on this government that land. That will provide 10% of the nation's energy. It's not a whole lot, but, you know, regardless, <laughs> she's she's prepared to spend billions of taxpayer dollars on this. Absolutely, yeah. So wait, 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 wait. Should the government be getting paid for this, not the other way around? Well, in theory, yeah, but 
We'll they're, see. They, they're leasing. They're talking about leasing land out. That's what they're talking about. Yeah. That's insane. If they're going to be getting, if they're going to be paying, somebody. I'm just guessing. It's the government. Oh, oh okay. You're speculating. I, I got gotcha, you. Yeah, I got gotcha. I mean, you. I wouldn't surprise me yeah. if what you were saying was true. That's why I'm like, that's crazy. Well, I'm sure it's going to get crazier. Let's hear more. Yeah, Absolutely. Let's keep going. Proposing to make public lands renewable energy friendly isn't new. Actions were taken at the end of the Obama administration to put a moratorium on new leasing for coal mining on public lands. But Pacino says this would put policy back on track after Trump's changes and expand the moratorium to fossil fuels other than coal. Put Trump's na- So this is the next part of her plan. Put Trump's national monument rollbacks down, flip them, and reverse them. In December of 2017, President Trump shrunk Utah's Bear Ears and Grand Staircase Escalante National Monuments by a total of 2 million acres, removing protections from over 100,000 archaeological sites and angering both conservationists and Native American nations. Warren says she'd use authorities given to her by the Antiquities Act, which allows the president to designate national monuments to restore monuments affected by Trump to their original size. So, just to be clear... A monument isn't just like the Statue of Liberty. Or Mount Rushmore, no. A monument is some massive swath of land. That's what she's calling a monument, that they've cut they've cut acres, thousands of acres, out of these so-called monuments? It, it appears so, or at least that's what they... It's like under an umbrella of monuments, huh. right? Like, you know, a monument, obviously we have this Western notion of monument being like, you know, the Greek pantheon or yeah, statues. Yeah, just a thing, like, you know, but, I mean, small... You know, I, I guess it could be like a monument to the culture, right? Like, mm-hmm. you know, the Native American burial ground or um, a former village or something. That's that's what... You know, you know the crazy thing about this is uh, these changes in the laws to, like, undo the bad stuff that was uh, that has already been done is they've already undermined the industries that were operating, so they've left. And it's not even cost-effective to, like, resubstantiate them in the United States. So, like, the changes that are, you're going to make to uh, now allow those industries back, it, it doesn't you know it's 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 futile it's a it's a it's a show it's showmanship it's not it's not a real genuine thing that's going to happen well she is i mean this is just political promises from her right yeah. like this is a show to show her potential voters why they should vote yeah, for her it's, well trump does the same thing yeah they all do the same office. thing all it's, politicians it's do this this and thing. people buy it they do every four years they're back in the same old scam continue here uh you vincent are sharing a story about this Elizabeth Warren and how she wants to use public lands. Well, yeah. use and not use too, right? You know, say that she wants to buy back or somehow reacquire the some of the land, you know, for like monuments they say that Trump gave away. And with yeah, the rest, she said Trump gave away how many acres? Two million. Two million does, acres? Uh, you know, I'm curious. How does he even have the authority to give away two million acres? Well, because the president has the authority to... Um, I know he's the authority be, to like, seize it. I don't necessarily think he had the authority to give it away. Did he sell it? Did he... I mean, how and did I they, they he said, took no, no, that no, Okay, so it said uh, Trump shrunk the protect the monument by total two million acres, removing protections from over 100,000 archaeological I don't, sites. I don't, understand, I don't understand how he even has authority to do that. And they removed it. Uh, well, under, they do, right? And she says she she the same authority he has to do that, she's yeah. going to use it to put it back. Well, okay, so I don't even think she has the authority to put it back. I don't see the thing is... The, they can do whatever they want. They can have, do whatever they no, 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 no. want. The law changed. Up until recently, the, the president's had the authority to designate uh lands as or purchase lands i guess um and and put them under protective like some sort of government protection all right mm. my understanding is a number of years ago under i don't know what president exactly but one of the presidents recently uh they changed that because i don't know exactly i forget why exactly but it was like they they didn't want uh the pre- the presidents to be able to like to to do that anymore because i guess one president did a whole lot of that and so my understanding was that only Congress has that authority now. Well, I, I I'm not sure about exactly what you're you're saying. It sounds right, but recently, in recent years or recent yeah. decades, Congress gave away a lot of its power to the executive. Right when, like you know, the Bushes and Obama were in, and so now uh, a lot of them are freaking out now about all the stuff that the president's doing that they think and so were taught in school that they shouldn't. Restored, so they took the power away from no, the they, president gave, they just they gave it. it. They gave my my understanding is they gave a lot away a lot of power that they should be doing to the executive. Right, like you know, you've had executives like okay. Obama and Bush, you know, mm-hmm. waging all these declared wars that Congress really, you know, would actually have the power to do. I, they I, gave it away yeah, to the executive. I, I'd be curious as to when it was taken away with what president and when it was given back exactly, because I'm, I'm curious, like, was it did, was it given back under Obama? Well, we're going to have to do some research to figure it out because this article doesn't say.
So uh, let's see, I'll continue here. While the Antiquities Act gives the president the power to protect landmarks, Bushino says legal action currently being taken against the Trump administration argues that it doesn't give the president the power to remove those protections. If courts rule in favor of conservationists, Warren may not even have to do this if she becomes president. Yeah, that's my understanding. Though Bacino says she'd certainly be within her rights to de-shrink the monuments otherwise. Bacino? That's the um, someone from one of these lobbying groups oh, for, okay. that's, that's, that they interviewed. So she's analyzing this. this yeah, yeah, she's okay, an expert. You know, so it, it is curious, though, because uh, is, it, is it not the, let's see, uh, is it not the president who has the power to do enforcement? So if he, like, breaks the law, but he doesn't want to enforce it. Yeah, who's going to enforce it on him? Right. Well, exactly. That's what uh, Andrew Jackson said when the courts ruled the Trail of Tears was illegal. He says, okay, well, the courts made the ruling. Now let's see them enforce it, which they obviously didn't. So. They don't have the power to enforce, do they? It's well, the, I mean, they can it's order the their... that has the power to enforce. The court, the, a judge could find, a, in theory, they could find a president in contempt. Oh, in maybe theory. that's how they would... If, Sort of, inf- but well, then how would they enforce it? Do they have they, their own well, exactly? Well, Jackson they had had and- well, Jackson had control of the army at that point, so I mean that was you know that was. Um, I mean, but if the court finds, I mean, I guess if the court found him guilty, they would re- they could remove his authority. Well, as now president. wait a minute, isn't it true that you can't bring criminal charges against a seated president? Yeah, yeah, you could only impeach them, which I you know if, if Trump true, does too, that it, include contempt of court? Like if a judge well, issues an order against the president saying you must do X or not do X, and then the president violates that order, contempt sure. isn't generally considered a criminal charge because it's not in statutes. It's just a power of the court. Well, so, I imagine it would be an impeachable offense then if the uh, if the um, president isn't uh, um, recognizing the judicial authority. That's possible. So, uh, but the courts next- can't impeach him. Exactly. Yeah, well, it's mm-hmm. a Congress that can. So well, that's, that's okay, the whole separation of powers works. There's probably a difference between in, there's well, there is a difference between impeachment, which removes them from power, and uh, a court saying you can't do this. If the president does it anyway, theoretically, they would still be able to enforce that action, probably through their own, you know, I don't know, bailiffs or something. Mm-hmm. And and really, if you think about it, it's the he doesn't have the power to control the um the military uh once the courts remove the president's authority to do so if that were well, to the courts come down can't to remove can't. his authority he's it's a constitutional commander. uh well i would i would say that unless they reinterpret the constitution to what, say that. which they do well, all the time well, so right. uh, you know it's right not, but i think them. I, I don't necessarily know that like i know they don't have the power to remove his authority as president necessarily um or remove him from presidency but it doesn't necessarily mean that they couldn't uh remove his ability to you know i don't know maybe do something um, under, you know, if he's doing, I don't know, like, you know what no, I mean? The courts, like, no, the courts can't do it. They interpret the law. That's what they're supposed to do. If there's right, a disagreement right. between Congress and the, uh, the president right now, it's called, ju- I think it, what's it called? Activism. Judicial for, activism. Judicial activism. Act, activism. Activism. And I think it's something what's ruling from the bench or I, I forget exactly what, what mm-hmm. exactly the term was. So, but I mean, you the balance of powers is all screwed up. So, I mean, it doesn't, the original rules don't matter the court, anymore. Right. The court still has, still has the power to, you know, make a decision, right? Sure. So it, I would think at that point... But how do they enforce it without the executive branch to do their bidding? If the president doesn't obey the court's order, theoretically, the president is it doesn't doesn't have the power to act. So, like, so I, I don't necessarily know that that The would president be, has the power to do anything he wants as long as men with guns will only follow within his the, orders. Only within the decisions, of, only within a uh, context of what's legal within what the court decides. But that doesn't ever actually, it doesn't actually ever play out that way. Well, and the court's decision isn't always, you know, the correct one either. It's well, not I always. Mean, most of the time, what the, what's the court going to do? decisions he, don't necessarily. He, what's he, the court going to do if he doesn't, if he doesn't listen, if he doesn't do what they you say? Know, I, I don't know. It's a good question. But it sounds, it would seem to me that the, the courts have the power within, uh, as long as it's not as long as it's not a matter of him breaking some law, right? Like, so if he personally breaks some law, there's there's a difference between him breaking some law, I would say, and him acting within within his presidency, if that makes any sense. No, there, I'm not sure what you're saying. Different. There's, I think there's two different things. Like, they couldn't, the courts couldn't necessarily go after him for sleeping with some woman and that woman. Sure, that's not a crime. Well, no, uh, if it was rape or something like that, they couldn't prosecute him for that. Right? Because he's until a sitting president. He's, right, after, until after he's that. But if it's relation to uh, something else that's not a personal you know, uh, act that violated the law, mm-hmm. 
I think they might still be able to come in and if he's violating them. some rule of yeah. of state, you mean? Yeah, that's not necessarily um, uh, removal from m- removal of his presidency. Mm-hmm. So he would still be president, but he couldn't necessarily you know do something. And theoretically, the military would have to comply. Um, so they wouldn't necessarily be able to obey his. Theoretically, order. that's theoretically. where everything. Well, no, 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 the, the military rails. wouldn't have to comply if he did something that violated the constitution, right? The military doesn't take orders from judges or senators or anything. That's I think they do. No, I they don't. No, from the president. No. No, no, no. Commander no, in chief, it's they separate. Do. Oh, no, they oh, right. don't. I don't. I I would agree, but I think that the the courts still overrule as far as uh you know the Supreme Court would still overrule the, the presidency as far as like if 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 the president decided something. Has that ever has happened? Has the has the court ever reversed a presidential I, move I'm of the military? I'm not entirely sure about this, so it might be. It would maybe be something that we haven't seen before, but. You seem really frustrated, Vincent. Uh, no, no, no. I'm just, just, it's just, you know, it's a lot of speculation, so I don't know why. We have, I mean, look, we have definitely seen the courts roll on, like, uh, certain aspects of the presidency. Like, is was he actually elected president, right? Like, or who was elected president for that mm-hmm. matter, right? Like in so, the year 2000 with Yeah, uh, yeah, yeah. We ha- we've George seen Bush. that kind of thing happen. So I'm not necessarily sure that they wouldn't have, you know, the courts wouldn't be able to do anything in a case where... It was, uh, you know, interpretation of the law. Mm. Um, the president doesn't get to make the law in and of himself. It's an act of Congress. And so ultimately. Well, sure. But the, again, what you're talking about is all the theory behind the government. Yeah, and it's true. We all know right. that they don't follow their own rules. Yeah. So, I mean, I mean they, what happens in practice, you know, who knows? Well, I, I mean, in I practice, know, but... the president sends troops to all kinds of parts of the world without authorization from Congress. In yeah. fact, there was recently um, when he's supposed to have authorization. They're supposed to pass a, a well, war. Well, it's because they do it. They do it. I, I believe they do it for like international work, like you know, through as part of NATO or part of the UN. So that's that's the justification for it. I believe. Free Talk Live. Listen live seven to ten p.m. Eastern, or grab the podcast. It's all at freetalklive.com. 